Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago live stream. My name is Liam, I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago. We create lightning presets and create profiles for photographers. And today we're taking a look at the upcoming Archipelago AI portrait tool set, which is an incredible set of 30 tools designed to elevate your portraiture editing, allowing you to retouch your images directly in Lightroom using the new Adobe AI functionality. So it essentially selects your subject and chooses elements within that subject, such as their you know, eyebrows, their eyes, their skin, skin, their lips, uh, and allows you to edit those right in Lightroom without the new need to head over to Photoshop and do retouching and things like that in there. So very, very excited to show these tools off for you today. I can see we've got a few people on here already. What I love is that Mary, Mary's on almost every time. Mary didn't even know there was a stream today, but was one of the first on here already. So love that. Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I gotta stay hydrated. Got some excitement in here. Lots of people anticipating the release uh, of this new set. So we'll get underway shortly. So yes, this is a set that's gonna be coming to our Quest subscribers from tomorrow. So you've not got long to wait for this. This is March's release, so March 1st, which is tomorrow. Uh, this will be released to our Quest members, and this is the Archipelago AI portrait tool set. So like I said, this uses the AI functionality in Lightroom to select your subject and elements within that subject uh, and uh, do lots of retouching, lots of enhancements to your portraiture images. So whatever type of portraiture you shoot, any images at all with people in. Um, if you have a recognizable subject, it will be able to do retouching to those subjects. And there's a whole, uh, you know, it's a really long list. It's 30 presets that allow you to really dial in the edit. So we'll dive in, we'll take a look at those uh, those presets. I kind of talk a little bit about how to use them, get the most out of them. Um, I've got five amaz amazing images that I'll be editing with today. Uh, but actually, before we get underway with that, as usual, we'll be doing a giveaway. So you'll be able to win a preset collection of your choice. Uh, just by being here, tuning in live to the stream and interacting in the chat as we go through the stream. So if you're here, you tune in live, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You have to be subscribed to get into the chat, so make sure you're subscribed. And on that point, we actually just hit 4,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much to everyone that is subscribed, all the support that we get over here on YouTube is massively appreciated. Uh, so yes, make sure you are subscribed. Give this video a like right now as well. And then just interact in the chat as we go through the stream, and we'll be choosing a few people from the chat to win uh, some copies of presets, some free presets of your choice. That could even include the brand new Archipelago Amara set, which was released around a week ago. Uh, so if you have been looking at that and you want to get your hands on it, you've not yet pulled the trigger, you could get Amara as your free preset collection or anything else if you've already got Amara. So uh, definitely make sure you're subscribed, like the video, jump in the chat and interact as we go through and stick around till the end. We'll announce some people to win some free presets. Sorry if I sound a bit nasally. I am uh, currently in the midst of having the terrible Rona. So I'm feeling a bit run down, but I'm excited to do this stream. So thank you so much again for joining. Uh, so for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Quest is the name of our preset subscription service. So you could subscribe to Quest right now for $8 per month, and that will give you access to download a new preset collection that we release each month. So like uh, like I said before, this is going to be released tomorrow, the 1st of March, uh, and this preset collection will be free to members of our Quest membership. So if you pay the $8 subscription fee, you get to download that current month set for free. Uh, so actually right now, we're still in February until the end of today. Day. Uh, and February's set is Quest 23 Odeon, which is a cinematic preset collection, features uh, presets and some color grades that you can mix and match, some amazing cinematic tools uh, in there as well. And that's this month's current set. So if you are subscribed right now, uh, or if you go ahead and subscribe over on archipelagoquest.com, uh, today you'll be able to download Quest 23 Odeon as part of your membership. And then tomorrow, when we launch the AI portrait tool set, you'll be able to download that for free as part of your membership as well. So there's lots and lots to love about uh, quest with your membership you also get 30 percent discount off the regular archipelago presets so if you don't win one of the free sets today uh, but you want to get hold of something like amara it's great to be a quest subscriber you can get your dedicated code go ahead uh, and use that to download the archipelago presets with a 30 percent discount and that's exclu exclusive to our quest members so lots to love about quest uh, we get lots of great feedback about the membership and like i said it's just eight dollars uh, per month to be a member and you get a new set of presets every month let's have a look at the chat before i jump onto the images always look forward to the quest presets says mark 
Yes, first of the month is always an exciting time. Thank you, Aubrey. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm recovering. I'm recovering. I'm getting that. I felt really, really awful the last couple of days. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. So this is going to help. This is going to help. I enjoy doing these. All right, let's head over to Lightroom. So I've got these five amazing images that I'll be editing with this brand new set. Uh, I've actually gone through and I've pre-edited these with the various different uh, preset collections. Um, I'll show you those edits as we, as we go through these. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and enhance them further using this brand new AI portrait tool set. So when we talk about AI, uh, AI stands for artificial intelligence, and it's essentially the ability within Lightroom for the program to understand where things like the subject, the background, the sky, different elements like that are in the scene. Uh, and with portraiture, it can even figure out where a subject's eyebrows are, where their eyes are, where their lips are, where their skin on their face is, where the skin on their body is. And we've used that uh, within these presets and a lot of our recent releases uh, to allow us to really dial in the edits, uh, speed up the workflow, make the editing time much, much quicker, more efficient um, by uh, just getting the results that you want really quickly and easily with lots and lots of control. So we released Amara, like I said, around a week ago. Archipelago Amara is a set of uh, eight presets, but it also has these amazing looks, which are a one-click solution for retouching your image. Uh, so there's four looks in that set and they use the AI functionality. And this set actually was developed by Chris alongside Amara as a complement to that and tools that help you to dial it in even further. So this is gonna really take you away from having to use things like Photoshop all the time to edit your portraits. And what's really amazing about something like uh, the AI functionality is you can synchronize the edits across all of the images within a certain session, and it's gonna figure out where the subject is, where all the elements within their features are, and do all of the edits to those images within the matter of a few seconds without needing to go to each one, open in Photoshop, do the retouching, save it back to Lightroom, next photo, do the same. So it's gonna really, really speed up your workflow. You're gonna love what the these tools can do to your images. So like I said, we've got these five amazing images. I'll go through and edit all five. Um, we'll just do them in order today, uh, just to make things nice and easy. And as I go through the edits, you're gonna see the photographer's name in the top left. Uh, so this one here by Diego, absolutely gorgeous portrait. This one's been edited already using Quest 19, which is the elements set. Uh, Quest 19 is available uh, for Quest subscribers to purchase from the archive store. So if you missed this one when it was released uh, a few um, months back, you can go ahead and purchase this from the archive store. Uh, and this is the element set. So it features presets uh, such as air, earth, fire, water, and spirit. And this one was edited with fire. So if I show you very quickly, this is the before and this is after and that's edited with Quest 19 Fire from the Elements set. And again, that's available on uh, archipelagoquest.com in the archive store. So we're gonna start with this image uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the set first of all. So you can see the set itself lives at the top of the uh, presets panel here. So this is actually grouped alongside the Archipelago AI tool set. So many of you will have already got the AI tool set. This is actually a free set that we give away to our newsletter subscribers. So if you subscribe to the Archipelago Presets newsletter, you can get hold of the AI tool set for free. So that's this one here. And we sort of see this as a little bit of like um, an essential starter set for AI. So this allows you to do things like selectively edit the subject or the background or the sky. Lots of really core key um, tools in here that you'll use on just about every type of image. And again, this is free if you subscribe to the Archipelago Presets newsletter. So there's a link in the chat there. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And once you confirm your subscription, you'll get a link to download the AI tool set. So this is sort of like your essentials, your starter kit. And then we've developed the portrait tool set that is specifically designed for retouching your portraiture. So we, we've nestled that together at the top there. And the idea is that, you know, these two sets, um, you're going to use these on, you know, all of your work, regardless of which preset you choose to use. So we put those right at the top so they're really easy to find. And then you can go ahead and edit with any of the Archipelago or Quest presets that you like. And you'll always find those tools right at the top there. 
So again, go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter. Get yourself the AI tool set. Great starter kit. Some of the tools in there, such as Silver Reflector, uh, Hazy Light, Watercolor, uh, the Subject Tools, Subject Sharpen, and Soften, and the Skin Hue. All those tools um, are absolutely amazing. Uh, Silver Reflector, I can see Aubrey mentioning Silver Reflector, is, is used all the time. I've used that on pretty much every single image since it was developed. Um, so there's lots of great tools in there. Definitely, definitely check that out. Uh, but we're going to be looking at this set, which is the AI portal portrait tool set. So again, this is going to be released tomorrow to Quest subscribers. Um, if you become a member today, you'll be able to download the Quest Odeon set today and then get this tomorrow when it's released. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already. And this one, we've got 30 tools. You can see it's a massive set. So we've given you lots, lots of bang for your buck this month. Uh, so we've got uh, different tools that affect the skin, the eyes, lips, brows, hair, and even teeth. And obviously, because we have the preset amount slider, We've got total control uh, without needing to dive into the actual masking panel at all. You can just do everything right from here uh, without the need to go in and brush in things and kind of select different masks, all that kind of stuff. You can just click the preset, set the amount you want, and away you go. So we'll go through and we'll start editing with these in uh, in just a moment. So like I said, this one here is edited with elements. This is before, this is after. And what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and zoom in on the subject so you can see them nice and clearly. And then we'll go through some of these tools. So let's start off with the skin tools at the top. So we've got skin, brush, uh, face and skin brush body. So the best way to describe it, the brush is sort of like, if I kind of hover over it, you can see what the effect is. So if we take a look at the skin texture here, you can see that it just smooths out that texture. It just uh, sort of hides some of the blemishes, makes them less noticeable, and just gives that really pleasing, smooth effect. And this is the default amount. Uh, obviously you can increase and decrease this with the preset slider and then you also have a version that affects the body so the first one will only affect the face now in a lot of cases that's pretty much what you want to do but you might want a little bit of that effect on the body certainly you tend to want a little bit less on the body than you do on the face um, so you've now got these as separate options here face and body then we have diffuse diffuse uh, essentially just kind of uh, blends the tonality so you can see this is without and this is with diffuse on the face you can see it just adds that nice little bit of softness there a little bit of kind of dreamy glow diffusion is is what it's doing essentially uh, and I always tend to start with this I think this is a really really nice very very subtle look um, diffusion on the face and then from there I use the brush in addition just to kind of smooth out blemishes dependent on the subject and the texture of their skin so let's go ahead and do that first of all so diffuse face I'm going to click on that and now we can see we've got the slider this is it at zero, this is it at 200, and really, really flattering, even all the way at 200. I actually would say for this, I would probably go fairly high, maybe go up to about 170. We get that really, really gorgeous diffusion on the skin there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush face, and this is gonna provide even more smoothing to the skin and just reduce those blemishes. So I'm gonna go maybe somewhere around about there. I'm gonna go for quite an editorial sort of look. Um, so something a little bit maybe uh, less natural, but still looking very refined uh, and, and very pretty. Um, a little bit like wearing, you know, more makeup, you know, having a makeup artist there and just kind of hiding some of the blemishes and really kind of making the skin look uh, very, very pleasing. So this is diffuse face and brush face. Of course, we can go ahead and do that on body now. And when we look at the body here, we've really, really got the neck, a little bit of the hands there, but we could do a little bit, I'd probably do a little bit of diffuse body um, just to, uh, kind of diffuse the neck just a little bit. So around about there. So let's go ahead and zoom back in. Uh, so then we've got a few more tools. So uh, the first one here, Skin Restore Tone. This one's an amazing, um, amazing preset. This is great if you find that as you're editing an image, applying presets, all that kind of stuff, the skin tonality changes too much and doesn't look as natural as it did. Uh, with this, if I hover over it, you can see that's one click of restore tone, and it actually just takes the skin tone back to something a little bit more natural to how it maybe looked on the unedited image. So if I apply that, again, you've got your control all the way at 200 down at zero, and you can see it's just gonna bring the skin tone back to looking a little bit more natural. So if it's overexposed, if it's looking a little bit too um, kind of blown out, anything like that, you can use this to bring it back to something more natural. So I'm gonna set that to 95, and then let's show you, this is the unedited image. This is the edit so far. That's with Quest 19 uh, Elements, the fire preset. And then we've used the brush face, the diffuse face, and the restore tone. Looking absolutely stunning. 
Next, we have skin desaturate. So if you sometimes find that this, the skin saturation ends up looking a little bit too much, this is a nice uh, one-click solution just to desaturate the skin. Again, got the amount slider, so you can set that where you like. And then we've got skin saturate, which obviously does the opposite. So if you find that the skin tones are looking a little too flat, maybe you're using one of the more moody presets and you like the tonality that it's offering, but the skin's just looking a little bit lackluster and there's not enough color in there, you can use the saturate, drag it up as high as you like, and boom, away you go. You got that nice moody look, but you're still getting some really pleasing skin. Now with this, I'm happy with the skin tone. Don't need to change the saturation, I don't think. Uh, but then we've got skin shift. So we've got three uh, skin shift tools here. We have shift orange, shift green, and shift magenta. And these just shift the skin tone across to that particular color. So if you're finding that, let's say, you're shooting in a forest where there's a lot of greenery, and obviously all that light that's hitting the green leaves reflects onto your subject, and you'll sometimes find that the skin tone's taken on too much green. Uh, but you don't want to lose all the green, because obviously you want the green in the forest maybe, uh, but you just want to kind of make the skin tone look a bit more pleasing. You can use the magenta skin shift just to push it across to magenta and offset the green. Uh, same thing applies if you've got the skin tones looking too cool, you can add some warmth back in there. Or if they're looking too magenta, you can use the green to pull that back. So again, great if you've got an edit you're really liking, if there's a preset you're using, you love what it's doing, but the skin tone's just not quite where you want it, um, this is gonna help massively. Now again, with this image, I don't think it needs it, but you can see the effect as I hover on each of those, uh, looking super, super nice. And of course, with the amount slider, you can dial it in exactly how you like. And then we move on to some of the eye tools. So we've got eyes define. So if I go ahead and apply this one, this is it set at zero, and this is it set at 200. You can add, add a lot of definition to the eyes, really captivate the uh, the viewer of the image. So I'm gonna go for, I'm not gonna go too high, somewhere around about 60, and that's just gonna pull a little bit more detail and definition into the eyes there, uh, just to make sure we are drawn to the subject's eyes. Then we've got brighten. So this is gonna brighten the eyes. Again, this is at zero and this is it at 200, so quite subtle. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a, a brighten, not, not anything too high, maybe about there, 118. And then we've got the eye shift tools. So again, similar sort of concept uh, to what's happening with the skin shift. The first one, which is the white eye shift, this is gonna affect the whites of your subject's eyes. So if you apply this, it's just gonna uh, desaturate the whites in their eyes. So if there's a little bit of yellow or another color that's kind of coming into the uh, whites of their eyes, you can increase this and just dial that back a little bit. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of this, about 55. And then we have the eye shift tools. And this is very fun. This is a way to shift the color of your subject's eyes. So uh, if they've got, you know, let's say it's a concept shoot or an editorial shoot, uh, and you don't necessarily need their eye color to be natural, Maybe you want to have something a little bit more creative that ties in with the color scheme of the image. Uh, you can use these tools to shift them. Uh, now, you're not gonna see it particularly well on this because this tends to work um, a little bit better on lighter eyes. So in this case, you can see that the, the eyes are a little bit darker. Um, so we'll, we'll check this out on some of the other um, images I've got to edit, but this will just shift the color within the, the eyes of the subject. So very, very cool. I'll show you that in more detail on a couple of the other images that we've got. Then we've got some uh, lip tools. So we've got lip define, so that just adds more definition to the lips of your subject. Lip soften, soften, which does the opposite of that, just softens up those lips. So I'm probably gonna go for that on this. Just a little bit of softening, maybe around about there. Uh, lips desaturate, lips saturate. Um, so that's a really nice option if you've got a uh, lipstick that's just popping too much. Again, the preset maybe is pulling out that particular color too much and it's just looking too rich, but you don't wanna lose that color in the rest of the image. You can just dial that back with the desaturate. Or if you wanna add a little bit more color into the lips, you can do that with the lips saturate. Uh, then we've got lips darken and lips lighten. Again, self-explanatory, so you can decide exactly what um, tone you want in the lips there. And then we have lip shift. So this is actually gonna add color into the lips. So lip shift with the red circle. This one's gonna give a natural tone to the lips. So that's gonna look like that. Uh, and then lip shift red is gonna add a red tone into the lips. So again, great to add that in if you want to after. It's gonna select the lips and apply that just to that area of the image. And you can either do that with a natural color tone or with a more red color tone. So for this, I'm happy with the color tone that's in the lips already. I'm gonna go for lip saturate and just enhance that a little bit further. So maybe around about there. 
And then we have Browse Darken and Browse Lighten. Um, browse Darken is something I tend to use quite a lot on portraits. Uh, just find that having a little bit more definition in the eyebrows is quite flattering. So I'm gonna go for that, about 47, just to darken them down. But we've also got the option to lighten as well. You've got Hair Define. So if you want to add more definition into the hair of the subject, you can do that with the Define tool here. And then Hair Saturate. Again, this is one that I use a lot. It just brings a little bit more of the natural color of the subject's hair into uh, into their hair in the scene. So I, I tend to add this and just crank it up a little bit just to bring a bit more color into the hair there. And then the final one we have is teeth shift. And this is just gonna shift the teeth to being nice and white. Again, it's a very natural look. You can use the amount slider to dial it. And that's just gonna brighten the teeth and uh, obviously uh, remove any color that's in there. So if there's a little bit of yellow or any other color cast, you can actually remove that, brighten the teeth. I uh, tend to find that going for something very subtle works best for this tool. So I'm going to go somewhere around 46 and that's looking absolutely stunning. So again, remember, we're in Lightroom. I've not done anything in Photoshop at all. All of this is happening with one click of these presets, the AI portrait tool set, and then adjusting the amount slider. And one thing I really love about this, of course we can go into the actual masking panel if you wanna make a tweak later, but actually the way that I would recommend doing it is let's say if I wanted to change the definition of the eyes, what I would just recommend doing is going back to eye definition, eye define, click it, which will default it back to 100, and then just dial it to wherever you want. Um, just saves you having to go in and find it in the mask. You can just click the uh, preset again, which will set it back to the default amount of 100. And then from there, you can just dial it wherever you like. So that's a really nice workflow. It means you don't have to move from this side over to here and dive in and find the mask that you want. Uh, select it and change the amount. You can just select the preset again. That'll reset it to 100 and then just dial the amount slider. So let's zoom out. There's the, uh, the edited image. This is before and this is after. Absolutely stunning. Gorgeous photo by Diego anyway, but I think this looks absolutely amazing with these enhancements. If I go in and zoom in again so you can see the subject nice and clear, and I'll give you the side by side. So this is the unedited image, of course. Uh, we've got a little bit of a white balance uh, tweak. We've added the Quest 19 Fire preset, and then we've gone through and used a whole bunch of tools from the AI portrait tool set to enhance the subject. You can see the skin's looking absolutely gorgeous. If we look at sort of this area here, where we can see a few blemishes and a little bit of a hot spot on the cheek, uh, and just up in the forehead there as well, it just kind of smooths those out in a really pleasing way. We've not had to go through and do spot removal. We've not had to do frequency separation on the skin, anything like that. Uh, we've just applied the presets. We've drawn more attention to the eyes by defining them, lifting up the, uh, the actual color in the eyes, adding a bit more color to the lips, whitening the uh, teeth, and all of that with a few clicks in Lightroom. So it's absolutely amazing. Uh, let me see if I can catch up on the chat. I know it's been popping off while I've been uh, chatting away. Uh, eyebrow darken really frames the face nicely, says Courtney. Yes, I love doing that on images. Love the brow darken, says Elizabeth. And this is the complete package, says Aubrey. Yes, it is. No more hand masking teeth. No more hand masking anything. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, literally nothing more you could need, says Aubrey. Thank you so much. Bye, 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 brush. <laughs> yes, bye, bye, brush. Those, those, those are things of the past. Now we don't have to go in and manually brush things in. Oh, what a nightmare that was. But like I said before, you know, this is amazing seeing it like this. But you could literally select this, select this edit once you've done it in, in the shoot, and let's say you've done a whole bunch of images and you wanna sync this exact edit to all of those photos. Uh, obviously the subject might be in a slightly different position, uh, facing a slightly different direction. It's gonna sync those edits to all those images. It's gonna figure out where their eyebrows are, figure out where their eyes are, figure out where their lips are, um, find their skin, and it's gonna do all of those enhancements, apply the preset that you've chosen, and it'll take you know a minute or two for it to figure it out because it's using AI, so it's quite intensive. It's gotta figure out where they are, but you can just sit back and drink your tea while it's doing that instead of having to open every single photo in Photoshop and do it yourself manually. It's absolutely incredible. So again, let's zoom back out. There's your side by side. Wonderful, wonderful photo, Diego. Thank you so much. Dumb question, but if you have applied a preset, then synced it to a bunch of other photos, then edited the other photos, then wanted it removed from all of the photos, is there a way to do that? Uh, yes, I think I know what you 
asking, I think. Um, yeah, you can simply just remove the masks. You can go in and just delete all of the uh, the masks uh, on each image. So you you can easily do that. I mean, a couple of different ways you could do it is if you wanted to keep the rest of the edits, you could simply uh, remove it from one and then sync that to all of them. Uh, or you could just reset all the images and sync them again to the one that you want. But yes, you can totally do that. Obviously, it's non-destructive editing because it's Lightroom. So all of this, this is another big benefit. All of this, at any point, you can go back in into your catalog, find the image, and you can just tweak one little thing. Or you can completely change the edit. And you're not saving multiple versions of that same file as well. It's all being done directly on the raw file. So it's definitely a really, really amazing workflow. Um, what would happen with two or more subjects? That's a great question. So this would apply to any identifiable, identifiable people in the scene. So if you can see there's a person, when you apply one of these, it was gonna apply it to those multiple people in the scene. Um, obviously you can go through then and individually tweak them. That would mean you'd go into the masking panel and you would select the different subjects. You could brush them in and out. You can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously Lightroom recognizes different people, I'll call them person one, person two, person three, that kind of thing. Um, so you can then go in and select those people and, and make edits that way as well. So definitely possible to do. Obviously that will mean that you're gonna go through the masks and kind of do that more detailed editing, but still much, much faster than it would be if you had to do this totally manually. All right, so next image. This one here by Anna Maria Langer. This is a gorgeous photo. This one edited with 4x5 preset number three. This is available from archipelagopresets.com. 4x5 uh, emulates the look of a large format film. So have that beautiful filmic look. It's quite light and airy in its look as well. This is the before, this is after. You can see very, very natural, but just has that nice little filmic edge to it. It's a gorgeous photo here. This is a great one to... Uh, to use the uh, tool set on. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can see the subject nice and clearly. And we'll go through and use the different tools again. So let's start with the diffuse face. That's what I tend to start with. I'm gonna back that off just a little bit. I don't want too much diffusion here. Uh, I don't think we need to do much in the way of brushing. So I'm gonna apply that, but dial it right back. So maybe somewhere around about there. It's looking good. Uh, let's see, do we need to do anything? I'm gonna restore tone because this is actually gonna help with this image. So you can see the edit's looking really nice and actually I wouldn't want it to be uh, too much darker. I quite like this light and airy look, but we are, uh, I don't know if this is natural light. It looks like it's a, a window, so natural light behind the photographer um, and it's just kind of illuminating the face, maybe just a little bit too much. So this is another situation where using restore tone will help. Uh, so if I apply that, this is it at zero, this is it at 200. You can see how it just restores the natural tone of the skin. So I'm gonna bring that up to about 88, somewhere around there. And that's looking much, much better to me. So again, here's before, here's after. Don't need to saturate the skin. I think the saturation is looking nice and natural. Don't need to desaturate either. And I don't think I need to do anything with the hue. It's looking good to me. But if I did, obviously, again, we've got those hue tools there. Eyes define, uh, I'm probably not gonna use that on this because we've got some nice defined eyes here anyway, just because of how well they're illuminated by the uh, the window behind the photographer. So I'm not gonna do anything with that. Uh, eyes saturate, I'll probably use a little bit of this, but I'm not gonna go super high because again, they're sort of nicely illuminated. I don't want this to look too unnatural. So I'm just gonna bring that to about 50. Uh, let's have a look at the eye shift. I'll show you this one. So again, you've got the different options here. So if I show you, this is the natural color of the eyes. It's sort of like a hazily color with a bit of a blue around the edge. Very, very pretty. But if you want to shift this, you could use eye shift green, for instance. You can see how that's gonna move it more towards green tonality. And again, you've got your amount there. So if I go back to undo that, and then we've got the eye shift brown, which you can see adds that nice rich brown to the eyes. So you can really quickly transform them. You don't wanna to go too crazy with this. Obviously it depends on the image and how well their eyes are illum uh, illuminated, things like that. But that's a very natural sort of looking brown. Uh, so if you want to do that, let's go ahead and, and keep the brown. It actually looks pretty cool. Uh, lips define, let's have a look. We might wanna do a bit of definition on this one, I think so. So just a tiny little bit, 31. Uh, and then let's see, I think we might do a little bit of a red lip on this. So lips shift red. I'm just gonna go relatively subtle, I don't wanna go too high. And then lips saturate, we can also use at the same time. So it's gonna bring the natural color up a little bit more and then shift it a bit more red. Uh, brows darken, love doing that. So I'm gonna apply that. Don't wanna go too high on that one. Uh, let's have a look, this is the unedited and this is edited. Yep, looking nice and natural. 
Uh, hair defined, don't think we need that, but hair saturate, I tend to like that one. Let's have a little look before, after. Yeah, quite nice. I'm gonna go relatively subtle, about 45. And then the last one, teeth shift. And let's just get those teeth looking nice and white, maybe about there. So 33, just a little bit of a lift, uh, maybe about there, 28. Okay, cool. So let me show you, this is the unedited image. And this is the edit. And you've just seen how quickly you can kind of go through and do those edits. Um, and if I show you the side by side, I'll go ahead and zoom back in on this one. So obviously we've done the little uh, color shift in the eyes there as well, gone for brown eyes. Uh, darken the eyebrows down. We've kind of smoothed the skin out nicely. The only things that I would maybe do with this, um, if I was sort of doing all of my editing right here, I'd maybe just uh, go to the the brand new spot upgraded tool, which now does the content aware remove. And I would maybe just go to some of these more obvious blemishes here and just quickly spot those out. And it does a great job of figuring out what's supposed to be there. So you don't need to let it know where to select from, anything like that. Uh, this one's a scar, so I'm not going to touch that one. That one looks like a blemish to me. And I think this little one down here. So that is what I would probably do. And here's your before and after. So just a tiny little touch up to some of those more major um, blemishes. But otherwise, we've got that really nice smoothing of the skin, really nice diffusion, uh, detail in the eyes, shift the color brown. We've enhanced the lips a little bit there as well. Looking absolutely stunning. I know someone asked if there was any uh, Nikon files in this. This one is Nikon file, N-E-F. So there you go. Nice variety of images for this. So impressive, says Kelly. Yes, thank you so much. So amazing. Can't wait to try these out, says Courtney. Not long to wait, Courtney. <laughs> Catherine says, can't wait to get into the studio and do some selfies. The eye shift is wild, says Rue. Yes. And perfection yet again. Lots and lots of love. Thank you so much. What does the teeth whiten start at number wise? 100. So they're all 100 as default. So all of these, when you apply them, will be 100 as default. And then you can dial it back to all the way down to zero or all the way up to 200 for a more pronounced effect. Um, if you ever find as well that you've got one particular tool and you've kind of maxed it out at 200 and you want to get more, all you have to do is go into the mask panel, select that particular mask layer and duplicate it. And then you can dial the amount on that second layer and that's just going to add even more of that effect. Now, it'll be fairly rare because I think these do a really good job from zero to 200 to kind of cover most of what you need. But you might sometimes find that you want to push it a little bit further than what it offers. And if that's the case, you can do that by duplicating the layer and then setting the amount on the second layer. A little top tip for you. I'll have to re-edit about 243 sessions now just because I'm excited. Yes, Kelly, you're going to have a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> Does that have the grain dialed back on 4x5 preset or is it how it is with one click? This is with grain B. So it's still got some grain on, uh, but it's grain B. So if I go ahead and zoom in, this is it with the grain switched off, grain switched on. And in case you need to see, this is with grain A. So that's with grain A. I put it on grain B because grain B is a little bit more subtle. And obviously part of what we're looking at is skin texture and what it's doing there. So kept the grain, but it's grain B rather than grain A, which is a bit more subtle, uh, just so you can kind of see the skin texture there. All right, so. Let's take a look at the next image. So image number three, this one here by Andre. Love this nice little studio portrait. This one's edited with AQ17, that's Quest 17 Air. This has the lovely blue running through the background. Again, Air is available in the archive store. So if you're a preset subscriber, uh, if you subscribe to the Quest membership, you can go into the archive store and purchase Quest Air from there, that's Quest 17. Uh, this is the before and this is after. I love what it's done to the background of this image, injecting that nice blue, greeny blue into the background there. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the subject so we can see what we're working with. I uh, love this, it's really, really nicely illuminated. So the first thing we're gonna do actually with this image, we can see when we uh, apply the preset, 
uh, with this particular image because there's not much in the way of, of highlights. Obviously the face really here is the only major highlight in the image. Uh, so it's kind of pushing the highlights a little bit high. And of course we could pull the exposure back, but then we're gonna create more of the shadow in this area, which uh, we don't wanna kind of go too dark there. So again, this is where we can use the restore tone. Absolutely loving this on images that are slightly overexposed. So this is at a zero, this is at a 200. Again, you can find somewhere that suits, I think around about there, 62. If I go unedited, edited, that looks about right to me. So really, really nice way of rescuing that without needing to pull back the exposure, lift up shadows, all that kind of stuff. You can just go, yep, that's right for the rest of the image. It's only the face that's looking overexposed. Now I can restore the tone. So let's take a look. We've got a really nice skin here. We don't need to do too much. The texture's looking lovely. So I'm gonna go for, uh, let's have a look, diffusion or brush. I'm gonna go for brush, but I'm gonna bring it right back. I'm gonna go for something relatively subtle. So I'm gonna set it to 34. I don't think we need to use too much diffusion either, but I'm gonna use a tiny little bit just to kind of get that nice dreamy glow, maybe about 16. So very, very subtle. Again, here's before, here's after. Looking lovely. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, skin saturate, maybe we might wanna do a little bit of that just to bring a bit of color back into the skin. Yeah, that's looking lovely actually. So I think around about 64, that just brings a little bit of color back into the skin there. Eyes define, yeah, definitely wanna go for that. So we got a nice captive uh, eye contact with the subject. So I think about there, 96 and then we can do the eye shift white. That's just gonna make sure that whites of the eyes are looking nice and crisp. And then let's take a look. So we've got eye shift green. So this is a really good example. You can see uh, the eyes are blue on this subject. We can go ahead and shift that green or we can shift that brown if we want to. But I think the eye color is lovely and obviously we've got this nice bluey green background. So I'm just gonna saturate the eyes instead. Add a little bit more of the natural color in not too high, somewhere around about there, just so we got the nice sort of complement between the background and the subject's eyes. Uh, let's have a little look. Lips shift, yeah, maybe let's have a look. Let's saturate the lips. Yeah, that's looking lovely. And I might darken them just a tiny little bit. So just around about there, just to kind of emphasize the lips a little bit more. And I might also define them a little bit here as well. Yep, right about there. Uh, let's see. Brows darken, always. Uh, I wanna go. Sometimes find it handy just to kind of refer to the original image, just to make sure you're not going too far. I think about there is looking good to me. Uh, hair define, let's go for that. It's just gonna add a little bit more definition to the hair that we see there. So about there, hair saturate. Let's add a little bit more of that uh, nice blonde color back into the hair there as well. It's looking good. We can't see the teeth, so I don't need to do that. So here we go. There's before and there's after. Absolutely stunning. Again, this is edited with Quest 17 Air. And then we've used all of the AI portrait tools or a lot of the AI portrait tools um, to enhance the subject. If I show you this little side by side as well. Again, super nice. The skin looks really natural still. We can see it's just smoothing out a few of those smaller blemishes there that just kind of disappear. Uh, nice, smooth skin, still really natural. Just pop the eyes a little bit more, get more definition there. Natural eye color is brought out a little bit further. Obviously it's shifted a little bit more green because the preset and that's what it's doing in the background. I love the way that they kind of match. We've got the darkened eyebrows, a little bit more in the natural color in the lips there. We've darkened them a tiny touch and defined them a bit just so we have that nice definition and enhance the hair there as well. Let's zoom out. There's your side-by-side -side comparison. And actually now that I'm zoomed out, I could restore the tone a little bit more. So I'm gonna apply that again and then just bring that up a little bit higher. So I'm actually gonna set that to about 160. That's gonna bring the tone of the face to be more natural. And now actually when I wanna compare it to the original image, that's looking much, much better. Still have that lovely color in the background there. And actually we could, let's just use one of the tools from the AI tool set as well. I'm gonna use sky blue because it's probably gonna think the background is the sky. Yes, it is, there we go. And I'm just gonna, bring a little bit more of the blue into the background using the sky blue. Basically the sky blue tool is looking for the sky, but on certain images when you're shooting in studio, it can think that the background is the sky. So this works quite well on this one. So I'm just gonna shift that across to being more blue. And there we go, boom. Weddings will be great with this, absolutely. 
any portraiture really, you know, anything that you've got subjects in that you just want to enhance them slightly, it's going to work really, really well. Uh, Janine says, very, very impressed with this set so far. It'll be such a dream for wedding season. Beautiful natural definition, says Courtney. The side by side, yes. So polished without overdoing it. Love that. Thank you, Kelly. Restore Tone is amazing. Yes, like I said, Restore Tone is um, one of the tools that I've actually found I've been using a lot more than I originally anticipated. Um, and, and, and yeah, you'll find that you use this a lot on images. It's just a really nice way of just pulling things back to being more natural based on the skin tone of the individual. <laughs> She's giving Steve Jobs <laughs> and slaying it. Love that. Yes, got the turtleneck on. All right, so again, there's your before, there's your after. Absolutely stunning. Lovely photo from Andre. Thank you so much, Andre. All right, next one up, we have this one from El Nova. This one is edited with Quest 23 Odeon. That's this month's current set. So as of the live stream right now, we are still in February uh, for the next several hours. Um, so if you are a Quest subscriber in February, you got this set, which is the Odeon set. This one's cinematic inspired. Um, it comes with a variety of presets and color grades that you can mix and match uh, along with various tools to really drive that cinematic look to your image. Uh, lots of people have been loving that set. You can go ahead and get that right now. If you're not a subscriber, go and subscribe. You can get this set right now. And then tomorrow we'll be releasing the AI portrait tool set as well. So this one edited with Quest 23 preset one. And I've used color grade one on here as well. There's the before and there's after. Looking very, very nice. So let's go ahead and use the portrait tool set on this. Let's zoom in on the subject so we can see the details. Let's start with diffuse face as usual. Go ahead and do some diffusion. That's looking lovely. So this is it at uh, zero. This is it at 200. And we've got a nice shallow depth of field in this image. It's shot with an 85 mil at f1.8. So uh, you can actually go for a little bit more diffusion than you would naturally, just because you've got that bokeh anyway. So a, a natural softness to the image. Uh, so I'm gonna go to 117. Uh, brush face, let's have a little look. This is it at zero, 200. I'm definitely not gonna go super, super high with this because it doesn't need it. I'm just gonna go for a little bit of a brush, maybe about there, 49. Uh, so again, when we look at the body, most of the body is out of uh, out of focus, so we're not really too fussed about that. But if you wanted to apply those to the body, you've got the tools down there for that as well. Uh, actually, I'm going to dial the brush back a little bit. I don't want too much of that. There we go. All right, so uh, restore tone. Again, this is going to be useful on here. We can see how that affects this image. So I can bring this back to a more natural tone for the subject. Let's take a look at the before. After, there we go. That's much more natural to what it was in the before image. Uh, let's see, we don't need to do any shift on the skin. I think that the, it's looking good. There is a slight bit of green, but that's because the uh, the color grade that I've included uh, includes some green and teal in the highlights. Um, so that's natural to this look and I wanna keep that. So I'm happy with that. Uh, let's take a look at eyes define. Love to put some definition in the eyes of my subject. I'm not gonna go super high because I think you don't want it to look too crunchy, but that's looking good to me. Eyes brighten, zero, 200. So we can just bring a little bit more uh, emphasis to the eyes there by brightening them. Uh, we could saturate the natural color there as well. Uh, or let's take a look. Let's see. I might actually use eye shift brown on this. Uh, obviously, the subject's eyes are already brown, but what I can see is um, in the in the reflection, you can see that the window and actually the silhouette of the photographer there as well. And there's a little bit of blue and green that's coming in. So if I do eye shift brown, you can see that it kind of gets rid of that and just keeps the brown. I'm just gonna dial that um, back. Let me catch up, there we go, dial that back. Uh, maybe somewhere around about there. So again, let's take a look at before, after. Still looks really natural to the eye color that was there already, but it's just got rid of some of that bluey green that was coming in uh, into the reflection. And now we've just got the natural eye color coming through. So that's looking good. And actually I might brighten them a little bit more now. Yeah, somewhere around there is looking good. Uh, all right, so let's see, lips. Do we wanna do anything on the lips? Definition, yeah, maybe a little bit of definition just cause they're slightly out of uh, focus. So a bit of definition there. And let's see if we want to saturate them. We could go for, mm, not sure. I'm gonna go for saturate. So we just get more of the natural lip color. And then I'm gonna darken them again, just a tiny little bit, just so we've got a bit more definition. I think somewhere 
Right about there, let's have a look at the before, after, that's looking good. We could do lip shift if we want something with a little bit more of a natural tone, or if we go for a red tone. So we could do lip shift and just bring this back uh, so that it's just a little bit of a subtle amount. And I think that actually looks really good. So again, before and after, it's looking very natural. We're just adding a little bit more of that natural tone into the lips there. All right, brows darken, let's go for that. Uh, I think around about there. Yep, looking good. Uh, hair defined, I don't think we need that. And I don't think we need to add any saturation to the hair because that looks nice to me already. And we can just see uh, the teeth there. So I'm gonna use the teeth shift, but I'm gonna keep that nice and subtle just to make sure the teeth are looking nice and natural. So again, here is the before and here's after. Really, really nice enhancement. Again, I think with this one, if I was wanting to finish the image, I would just, again, use the uh, content aware spot removal tool and we could just go through and click uh, the blemishes here just to remove any of the obvious ones and then the skin smoothing that we've got in the AI portraits tool set has done an amazing job at kind of blending the tonality giving a little bit um, smoother texture to the skin and we can just simply go through and do the content aware um, spot removal and this does a really great job you know it's um, figuring out where it should be sampling from uh, and if you ever need to sort of resample you can simply press uh, the uh, backslash key to sample from a different area of the image. So we can just do this to get uh, some of the texture here. And let's take a look. I think a little bit there. Lovely. So this is the unedited image and this is the edit. So just a quick bit of spot removal and then the rest of the texture of the skin has been done through the uh, the tools there. We've enhanced the eyes, just brought more of the natural color there, more definition to the eyes, darkened the eyebrows, enhanced the lip color, shifted it a slight amount as well. There's your side-by-side -side comparison. Restore tone is great. I feel like I struggle with skin tone, says Caroline. Yes, definitely. You're going to find that that helps a lot. And you'll also find that the shift, the skin shift tools will help a lot if you do struggle with skin tones. Eyes brighten is going to save so much time with brushes. It absolutely is. Love it so much, says Aubrey. Thank you. Really enhances the natural beauty in the subtle but incredible way. Yep, thank you so much. So glad to have found Archipelago and Quest, says Kelly, and a few people chiming in saying, me too. Yes, appreciate that so much. All right, so let's take a look. This is the last image here. So this one by Shannon, and this one's edited with Amara 2. So Amara, like I said, is our brand new preset collection available at archipelagopresets.com. This was released a week ago. Uh, there's been a lot of love for this uh, preset collection. Uh, and actually, like I said before, the AI portrait tool set that we've been showcasing in this stream was actually developed alongside Amara and the design to, design to work hand in hand. So I'll kind of show you how that works. Um, just as a reminder, if you are tuned in to the live stream and you're watching this live, make sure you are jumping in the chat and interacting. Once I've edited this image here, we'll be announcing some winners for some free preset collections. You get to choose a free preset collection of your choice. So we'll be choosing some people to win that after this image. Um, but yeah, again, Amara's uh, been out for around a week. The feedback has been absolutely amazing for it. I can see people jumping in the chat as well, saying how much they love it. Um, so Amara is a set of six color and two black and white presets, uh, incredible collection. And its secret power really is the looks that come with it. The looks are essentially designed as a one click solution for retouching your image. So you have these four different looks, minimal, natural, vibrant, and muted. And you can apply that. And that's gonna apply a whole bunch of masks to the subject of your portrait image. Uh, and you can then set the amount for that. So it's an amazing uh, way to quickly enhance your image. And that was designed then alongside this tool set, which allows you to then go in and on a more granular level, um, kind of dial in the separate features within your subject nice and easily. So you can use them together. You can use them instead of each other, whatever works for you. Uh, but Amara is an amazing set of presets with those looks already in it as well as a bunch of tools. It's absolutely amazing. You should definitely go and pick that up. If you're a Quest subscriber, again, you get 30% off the Archipelago presets. Uh, there is a quest, uh, code on the Quest members homepage that will get you 30% off uh, the regular presets, including Amara. Uh, and this one's ed edited with Amara 2. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this subject here. Let me show you. In fact, I'll show you the before. Here's the before. Here's after. That gorgeous Amara toning. And then let's zoom in on the subject here. And I'm going to use one of the looks. So I'm going to use look natural, um, which is going to enhance things like the eyes, the lips, and the eyebrows all in one click. And we can then just dial that however we like. Uh, so I'm going to set that somewhere around about there. But then from that, we can go ahead and dial in the individuals. So it's a really great starting point. You might find that you want to apply one of the looks to all of the images within your session. And then there might be one or two where you just need to enhance certain uh, parts of that subject. So you could do the look on all of them and then you could go in and just dial the eyes or the lips or the skin on the images that you needed to tweak. So again, really, really nice workflow. So for this, I would do, let's see, uh, skin's looking great. Obviously, it's quite uh, a pulled back portrait. It's 35 mil. We've got the full body in, so we're not getting loads of texture in the skin there. So we don't need to address um, too much in there. So if I just kind of look at what I would do with this, I would probably just do eyes define, but really dial it back so it's nice and subtle. I would do eye brighten. Again, dial it back so it's nice and subtle, somewhere around there. Uh, I would do, let's see. Yep, I'd go for some red lips using the red lip shift. Uh, this is it at zero, this is it at 200. I would go just subtle, maybe about 65. And I'd maybe darken the lips just a tiny little bit just to kind of add a little bit more um, definition there. And let's see, brows darken. Again, I'm gonna dial that to where I want it. So probably around about there, 65. Uh, hair saturate might be a nice one. Love the hair color on this subject. So we might want to saturate that just a little bit more. Uh, this is at zero. So 200, don't want to go too high, maybe about there, 67, just to kind of pull out a little bit more of that color. Uh, we can see the teeth there, so we can just do teeth shift. Uh, and I think maybe around about there, so 90. And let's take a look. So this is before and this is after. So relatively subtle because we've got that sort of um, uh, more pulled back portrait in this one. But you can see how you can start with a look and then you can just dial in some of those separate features. So like I said before, you can sync that look to all the images and then you can uh, just dial in specific features for certain images within the set. Or you could, of course, just get the look uh, where you want it, dial in a particular feature and then sync that edit to all of the images, whatever works for you. But the idea is you can kind of be a little bit more selective with the AI portrait tool set, whereas the looks in Amara are sort of a, a one-stop solution for kind of really quickly enhancing uh, lots of different features of the subject. So they're both fantastic. They both work really, really well together. Um, and you can use those looks that are in the Amara set with any other preset collection as well. So if you like those and you think, actually, I'd love to use those with, you know, four by five or whatever it is that you're, you're using, you can use the looks with any other preset as well. Um, so that's, let's take a look. There's the before, there's after. There's your little side by side. Go ahead and zoom in. Actually, I didn't do the uh, restore tone. And on this, that's actually going to be a massive savior. So you can see this is the just the preset itself. And then this is with the restore tone all the way up at 200. And actually I think having it relatively high on this is really gonna help the image just because we're losing some of the texture of the skin. You couldn't really see the freckles on the subject very well because it was a little bit blown out. So this is gonna pull that back, give us that nice natural look to the skin. And again, let's zoom back out. That's looking lovely. So yeah, skin restore tone is one that I've been using loads. Really, really helps to make sure it looks natural to the original. Uh, subject. Another gorgeous photo there from Shannon. So much, um, so amazing. Thank you so much, Shannon, for sending that one in to us. And that's it. So that's the five images edited there. Let's just quickly go back through. I'll show you the side by side on each of these. And then we'll go ahead and announce a winner. So uh, this one especially, I think, looks absolutely stunning with all those enhancements. This was a little bit more of an editorial look, a little bit more um, kind of skin smoothing that you might do typically, uh, but gorgeous look if you're going for something with a little bit more of an editorial vibe. This one here with 4x5, a little bit more of a natural filmic look. Uh, we've just enhanced the eyes a little bit more there, um, kind of reduced some of the details, did a little bit of spot removal as well. This one here, which is a studio portrait, the uh, restore tone really helped to pull back the detail in the skin. We've enhanced the lips. The eyes look amazing, super captivating. Uh, love that image. 
This one here from El Nova, absolutely gorgeous portrait. Again, that lovely shallow depth of field. We've enhanced the uh, the subject's eyes, kept the natural color in their eyes, but just lifted them a little bit. Again, kept quite a natural color in the lip and just enhanced that. And then just did a little bit of um, spot removal, but the skin's looking really, really nice on that. Um, if I go ahead and zoom in, you can see the, the detail there and the side-by-side -side comparison, what it's done. And then the last image again there from Shannon, lovely, lovely photo. This is edited with Amara and we've got that nice uh, kind of subtle detail into the skin, pulling out the lips, pulling out the eye detail and enhancing that gorgeous hair color as well. First was my favorite says Rue, thank you so much. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorites as well. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous photo. Thank you again, Liam, hope you're feeling better. Cannot wait for this set. Thank you all, really appreciate that. Yes, you've not got long to wait this time. Usually when we do the live streams, you kind of have a few days or even a week before they come out. But this time around, you've got these coming out tomorrow, so not long to wait. All the edits are amazing. Thanks for sharing, even though you are not feeling your best. Thank you, Nancy, appreciate that. Uh, this is definitely helping me feel a lot better. I love doing these live streams. I love getting to chat to all of you lot. Uh, let's have a look. I'd love to see an example with less naturally good skin. Uh, yeah, so if if the skin's, uh, you know, a little bit more, uh, needs a little bit more work, you'll find that this will get you a, a big percentage of the way there, but you might still need to do some more kind of detailed enhancements to the skin. And um, this is going to work for most people with sort of, you know, natural skin, natural blemishes, what you'd usually expect to see. Um, if someone has, you know, a something that needs a lot of work, you're going to find that this will get you a long way there. You can then open it in Photoshop if you need to go further and do, do those enhancements, but you're not starting totally from scratch uh, in Photoshop. So this is really going to speed up your workflow, even if you find you need to go a little bit further. Love, love, love this quest set. Thank you so much. Appreciate you explaining them all to us. We'll definitely tune in for the next live. Lovely stuff. So like I said, this is part of the Quest preset subscription series. So this one is going to be available to all of you Quest subscribers. Uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe today. If you subscribe very, very soon, so if you're watching this live, um, you can go ahead and download Quest Odeon immediately. And then tomorrow when this comes out, you'll be able to get hold of the AI portrait tool set as well. And then we're going to announce some winners of a preset of your choice. So Rue, Aubrey, uh, Mary, and uh, Whisper, you are all getting a free preset collection of your choice. So just uh, reach out to us. You'll see the support email there in the chat. Reach out to us there and we'll get you a free preset collection of your choice as a thank you for tuning in. Uh, and if you didn't win this time around, do come and join the next live stream. We do live streams at least a couple of times every month. They're great fun. Just a nice way to showcase the different, um, the different preset collections, uh, answer questions you have, share little tips and tricks, all that good stuff. And we do giveaways on every stream as well. So definitely subscribe to this uh, channel. Uh, like I said, we just hit 4,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone that supports the channel. Give this video a like before you head off and then go and check out more information about these presets. Uh, like I said, over on archipelagoquest.com uh, and also um, archipelagopresets.com for our brand new Amara collection. Lots and lots of great stuff happening um, all over the place there. So go and check all of that out and I'll see you in the next live stream. Thank you so much.